So I recently watched Jurassic World uh, Rebirth, which uh, is a bit, you know, splits people's opinions really. It's a bit Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. I love it for a couple of reasons. The main one being that I do love Spinosaurus and they've got a couple of swimming Spinosaurus. So let's have a look at one that I built a couple of years ago, but I've just tweaked it to make it fit the Jurassic World Rebirth look. So I made this one, um, for some reason I got into sculpting dinosaurs quite a while ago and I wanted to do Spinosaurus and I wanted to do um, one that was based on a paper that kind of indicated that um, Spinosaurus could swim or be found in, you know, in water. So I sculpted this one um, basically around a column, so a couple or three Spinosaurus swimming around a column. Uh, and I liked it, but I didn't do much with it. Printed it out um, several times, made a nice little display, but then left it at that. Didn't paint it, didn't do anything with it. Uh, and then along came Jurassic World Rebirth recently. Um, bear in mind, this is 2025 December, so it's been out a few months now. And I basically, I wanted to use my Spinosaurus that I'd done pretty much just in ZBrush. Um, and I wanted to uh, have a look at it uh, done up as a Jurassic World Rebirth uh, Spinosaurus. So I took it into ZBrush, basically just made it straight, full out, um, swimming along uh, left to right, right to left, whichever. Didn't have it curled round, didn't have it doing anything, uh, you know, uh, you know, no major movements in it. Um, and that's pretty much what I wanted to print out. But I realised I'd like to do a big one. So... I decided I was going to frame it up to be a meter wide, which is the biggest dinosaur I've ever printed. And I used the new Bamboo uh, P1S, which is uh, one of the latest printers that I bought. And I bought it on Black Friday for a really ridiculously cheap deal. So it's coming up to Christmas now. So there could be some really good deals on this um, machine still. And it is it is probably an outdated machine, but it throws out FDM or filament um, prints with extremely high quality. So basically, I this is my second bamboo printer, and if you follow this channel, you'll have seen me with the A1, and I thought I'll try it with this and just print it out in grey and just see how far I get on. So I, I basically took the, the, the ZBrush design, had a look at it in Nomad Sculpt, uh, had it painted up a little bit in Nomad Sculpt, um, didn't take long over it, just a quick bash together to give me an idea of the colours based on what I've seen online. Um, and then I started to split it up. So I got some 256 by 256 millimeter cubes made in Nomad Sculpt. That gave me an idea because that's the bed size of the Bamboo uh, P1S. I, I thought four of them, that's pretty much a meter wide. So if I know that length, then I can scale the whole Spinosaurus within those four cubes. And then I know how to split the, the, the entire thing up. So I just used um, the split tool. Didn't even bother using um, pegs or keys or anything like that. I just thought if I'm going to print it out large, I can just stick it all together and fix all the seams that way. So chopped it up into head um, and then basically split it off um, for, for the front half of the body, the back half of the body. Um, chopped off the forelimbs, chopped off the tail in two parts, and that was it. So printed the, a test head first, tiny little test head, and that came out okay. Teeth weren't as good as I wanted on the small one, so I then went out and, and, and obviously I, I knew it was going to look better on the uh, on the larger scale. So the next thing out of the printer was, of course, the head. So And that came off really, really well, so onto the body. And got the body off the front half of the body and got that looking good. Um, but basically, you know, offered them up together to see if they fitted and they look great. So then did the second half of the body, so the back half. Um, and, and again, that, that's already looking at something in the region of, of about 60, not about, about 50, 50, 55 to 60 centimetres. Um, and then added the um, the legs, so I printed a plate of the legs. Now one of them did f not fail, but it didn't fit very well, so I reprinted one of the legs. Um, just to, uh, after I tweaked the model in a little bit, and I just basically indented it a bit so it doesn't didn't um, collide with. Um, I hadn't done a very good cut. Um, and then the two tail pieces, um, and that's basically how it printed out. It, yeah, I started it on a Sunday night, finished it on the Tuesday morning from a print point of view. 
and then lots and lots of cleanup work. And I'm still actually at the stage of cleaning this up at the moment. So I haven't gone any further than cleanup. So I'm going through now and I'm fixing all of the seams. So I'm using plastic putty to, uh, to do the seam work and then rubbing it down. And one thing that is interesting with this, I decided to airbrush it, uh, but only with ink. So I'm using a bit of undercoat, so a bit of acrylic paint for undercoat uh, and started off with white undercoat. Um, but then I'm slowly working through and building up the the the, the seam, uh, the sculpting around the seams, and then adding more and more whites because I want a completely white one, um, ready to start the ink painting, um, which is going to be my next job. But I just thought it'd be interesting for you to see um, how quick it is to be able to uh, put something together like this, uh, and especially on such an amazing little printer as the as the the bamboo. Simply because the quality is is up there now, it, it, you know, for large format prints, you, you can hardly see the banding. Um, obviously, it's not like a resin, but then it's you know a fraction of the cost, um, and it's a fraction of the time actually. So this entire thing, I think it was a, a, a spool and a half of filament, which is only for me fifteen quid in the UK. Um, so it's it's very very reasonable to to get something of this size out. And that's obviously a meter wide dinosaur. So to get something that big at that quality is just fantastic. So I'll update you when I've got on with the painting or I might do a live and just you know talk you through how I'm gonna paint it with the, with the inks rather than acrylic paints, which is what I normally use. But I'm gonna use these um, Jurassic World colors that I've painted up on the, on the test um, design. So follow along and I'll update you when I've done the next phase. I hope you enjoyed this Spinosaurus video and if you did give us a thumbs up. If you're enjoying this kind of content then subscribe to the channel down below and let us help you create in new and innovative ways.